So I've been playing with this ROG Ally now for way too much over the last couple of weeks. And I've been really enjoying it. It's such an amazing experience. And I think by now most people have realized just how powerful these little handheld devices are. But I keep wondering, can it replace a desktop? Well, that's what tonight's video is all about. We're gonna show you just how versatile this device is, how easy it is to set up a desktop environment, and how well this little handheld can play desktop titles. But before we get into this video, I wanna thank our sponsor, Ugreen Tonight. Without their help, we wouldn't have been able to get this video off the ground. We've been using Ugreen products for a long time now, and we're always amazed at how well they perform for the reasonable price. Well, as of the next couple of days, that gets even better as Ugreen are taking part in the Prime Day promotions and offering up to 30% extra off their amazing range of products. Like this 91 Display Link dock with nine high performance ports, two HDMI, two Display Ports, a 100 watt USB C power delivery port, a 10 gigabit per second USB C, and two USB A ports, as well as a 1000 megabits per second Ethernet port. The dual media display allows you to use the HDMI ports and the display ports of the docking station to connect up to two 4K 60Hz monitors to your MacBook or Ultrabook, allowing you to display two extended screens to maximize your workspace and keep your laptop powered with up to 100 watts max charging via the USB-C power delivery port that charges the laptop as well as keeping the USB accessories powered. And this 7-in-1 dongle that we're going to be using in tonight's ROG Ally video with an HDMI 2 port two USB-A, an Ethernet port, and 100 watt power delivery and SD card slots. Check out the links below to take advantage of these Ugreen Prime Day deals. And now let's get back to the video to see this Ugreen 71 dongle in action. So as you can see with our one cable solution, we have a full desktop environment set up. It's gone straight from being on my device to being on this high refresh screen. So the one thing you do need to take into consideration if you're gonna do something like this, is you need a dock that can do your power and all your ports. Now, the Ugreen 7-in-1 dock has been perfect for this because we've got all the ports we need on this one little adapter. I've got Ethernet, I've got HDMI 2, we've got PD pass-through up to 100 watts, and we've also got two USB A's. So I've got my dongles for my keyboard and mouse. You can see I've got my 25-inch 1080p screen all set up here at 144 hertz, and the ROG Ally is getting the power that it needs to run the setup. We've basically got a complete PC, all in this tiny little handheld console with our keyboard mouse and decent screen. So now with this setup, we've gone from a little tiny little handheld to a full blown Windows PC. So though it's only got a low powered Ryzen with onboard graphics in this handheld, we're talking an eight core 16 thread that boosts about four gigahertz. So it's still more powerful than a lot of people's desktop PCs. Now, because we've got HDMI 2 on the dock, I can actually have this running at the 1080p resolution at 144 hertz. Now this monitor is a 240 hertz monitor, I can't quite manage that, but with a handheld like this, I'm never gonna get to my 240 hertz anyway. So 144 hertz at 1080p is gonna be perfect. And I also wanted a 1080p monitor, because obviously that then matches the resolution on this screen, so I can go from one screen to the other without having to adjust any of the settings within games, making it really fluid to go from one to the other and carry on playing. Now, obviously this little device could power up to a 4K screen. And if you don't mind a bit of scaling or using the MD FSR to upscale it, you could use a much higher resolution monitor, either 4040p or the 4K. Because I had this 1080p high refresh rate, it's worked out perfectly for my setup. And because I want a nice clean gaming setup on a decent wireless keyboard and mouse, they've both got 2.4 gigahertz dongles, which are plugged into my dock. Give me decent performing peripherals for a gaming setup, just like you'd want on your desktop PC. Now you could wire it in, but personally I don't like wires trailing along, and this makes it nice and clean to plug my one device in and I'm up and running. Now the last piece of the jigsaw for this setup is the power supply, because you're gonna need a USB-C power supply to power your dock, which then passes that power through to the ROG Ally. Now you could just use something like a little wall charge like this. I've got a Ugreen 100 watt, which has multiple USB-Cs and a USB-A, a very handy little charger which I could plug straight into my dock. But for my setup, I'm actually using the Ugreen Nexo charging station. The reason I've chosen this one is it has three AC plugs. So I can plug the monitor, maybe some speakers or other bits and pieces in. Plus it has my USB-C and USB-A hub in here. So you can see I've got a USB-C cable going straight to my dock and then we're all up and running. 
So now that we've seen how to set this up with a one cable solution, how does it perform? Now before we start to talk about how this actually games in a desktop environment, I want to also mention that this is a fully fledged desktop. You can also do all your work on here as well. If you've only got this device on you and you need to get some spreadsheets done, a bit of photo editing, even a little bit of light video editing, this device will cut it. It is really quite pokey. And also you have the XG graphics port on the top so you can put a fully fledged graphics card in here if the onboard graphics aren't enough. But tonight we're just going to be focusing on how this onboard graphics chip is going to perform on this 1080p screen in some popular games. So at the start of this video I was playing Rocket League over on the sofa. It's playing really well in the handheld. I've popped it straight into my USB-C, unpaused it and as you can see we're playing again. No problems transferring from the handheld straight to my 1080p monitor. This is the advantage of using a 1080p external monitor as well with native resolution and it is playing amazingly. This is 1080p high settings as well. As you can see I'm not a Rocket League player. So next on the list we're going to be doing a bit of CSGO. Again 1080p uh, mid to high settings and as you can see we're getting over 100 frames per second in dust and this is a classic esports title that I know a lot of people still play. Now it isn't the most demanding game in the world but the fact you can play a, a popular esports title at 1080p from a tiny little device like this is really impressive. It feels so fluid as well. Now I have had previous AMD chips, uh, Intel chips and tried this on onboard graphics and very often you get a lot of lag and stutter. This has been absolutely smooth as silk the whole time I've played it. All of these tests are running in the turbo mode. If you bring up your, your options menu you can change this at any time through your silence performance and turbo. All of these other options do still work on the desktop as well. This is quite nice to be able to see. Then you can press your button and get straight back to your game. So you can see at the moment we're pulling about 43 watts. Temperatures it's quite warm. Now running at 43 watts here the fans have spun up. It's still pretty quiet. It's nothing like a game laptop and I'd be more than happy running it without any sort of headset or noise cancelling headsets. It's not bothersome at all. So there we can see about 38 decibels. That is really impressive. Now admittedly it is only pulling 43 watts as opposed to maybe three, 400 watts of the desktop but still you've got to be impressed with what this little handheld can pull off in a desktop mode. Next up we've got Dota 2. This is again 1080p and we're talking pretty high settings, not the absolute max, but for again for a little device like this, very impressive. And as you can see we're getting about 90 frames per second here. Let's try and get into a bit of a busier fight and see how it performs. But again 95 frames per second still. I think if you were playing this competitively you could still do it without even dropping any of these settings. Again we're pulling about 43 watts that does drop after you've been in game for a fair while but it's always stayed above 30 whilst I'm playing. And as you can see a very comfortable gaming experience and it looks great on this 1080p screen and it feels so smooth. So now we're going to play a little bit of PUBG which is a little bit more demanding. Settings wise again 1080p I'm using my more competitive settings so they're not whacked right up I'd rather have reasonable frame rates but as you can see medium to low settings which is still great for PUBG because it is more about the performance of the game than the actual graphics, especially with how old this game is now. So as you can see indoors we're doing about 100 odd frames per second. Totally playable. And now we're outside, we're talking 80 frames per second which again, this isn't a massively powerful desktop, we're talking 300 frames per second but this is still playable at 1080p and still enjoyable as well. Okay so we're now playing Fortnite for the last game we're going to be testing in this video. Uh, we've got a mix of 1080p medium settings and you see the frames per second inside here is about between 65 and 85. So more than playable and certainly looks great on this 1080p screen. So there we go, totally playable and quite an impressive experience for such a tiny little handheld as a full desktop. Now yes you're not going to be playing some of the really heavy AAA titles at 4k high settings 
but if you're prepared to play at 1080p and turn some of the settings down, or maybe use FSR, you can get a really playable experience. And it makes me think, do you really need an expensive, massive gaming PC? Now, obviously, if you've got a gaming PC, I don't recommend selling it and going out and buying one of these. But as an alternative device that you can take out with you when you're on holiday, out on a day trip, this is an amazing machine and can then be plugged into your hotel room TV or maybe just your lounge TV for a bit of fun gaming when you get home. So hopefully you found this video interesting. I've really enjoyed using this device and I love using it docked. And this is one of the things that really annoyed me about the Steam Deck and I wanted to be able to do. This is a fully fledged PC here with one cable. I've got a full desktop setup and it's surprising how much you can actually play. Now, as always, if you've got any questions on this setup or another setup that you'd like to try, pop it in the comment section down below and I will get back to you. And lastly, thank you for watching.